Well, again, uh, first three days been really good. I know um, probably every coach in that building and every coach in the country would be the first one to tell you that there's uh, you're going to get a lot of energy and an enthusiasm the first several days of camp, and uh, really want to find out who we're going to be in the in the middle of the camp and of things that I wanted to see at the beginning because uh, uh, I expected to see the, again, the energy and the enthusiasm, but I'm really focused on uh, execution as much as, as anything. So uh, that was really good on both sides of the ball and it's been a, a really good first three days. Yesterday we put on uh, shoulder pads and, uh, you know, so uppers, just shells as we call it. And it was a, another good day flying around and, uh, getting adjusted to, uh, you know, fall camp and the tempo, those types of things, so. Brent, that yeah. offensive line group, um, obviously five spots there. Are all those spots up for grabs, and how's that group, I guess, come along so far in the first few days? I think it's appropriate to say that. It's not a, a you know, we don't have you know, 50 guys to choose from, and um, but love the group of guys. They, again, it's a group that, you know, the hard work uh, has uh, shown that's been going on since the spring and with a couple of additions here this this uh, fall camp uh, since the last time we, we laced them up. And so I um, really like how that group's coming along and uh, got good depth there in regards to guys that we feel like can play winning football. And uh, Jacob Sexton, Jake Taylor, Mike Tarquin, uh, you know, Fabecci, Branson Hickman, Josh Bates, Several other guys, uh, you know, along with those guys. I mean, again, Logan Holland uh, has really done some some great things as a young player. Uh, again, B.J. Brooks, Joshua, Asosa. Um, that's a, a group of guys that you know we are really excited. Eddie Pierre Louis has, has jumped in there, and again, the, the, the young guys and the, the new guys have really impressed uh, with their ability to be able to execute. And then the older guys are better than they've ever been. I'm, I'm the leadership that we're getting from uh, Sexton and Taylor both, uh, and the improvement uh, that they uh, have brought to the table. And then again, my my feeling it's the best. You know that uh, Fabecci's been playing. These are coming from the, if these guys were uh, standing here in front of you. Uh, they're playing their best football. He and uh, Mike Tarquin, Spencer Brown. Uh, those guys. So Bill's done a great job along with uh, the rest of our guys on the offensive line, coaching them up and getting them ready. Grant, what's your uh, injury situation at the start of camp? How does that come along? Uh, Desan. Yeah. Uh, Desan will, he'll be, we're, we're holding him right now, trying to get him to heal up. He's got a little toe, uh, but he'll be fine in uh, another week or so. And uh, we're really pretty good. You know, it's, again, uh, Jalil's been out there. And, we haven't put any limitations on, on him. So he's been ahead of schedule. I mean, because at first you thought well, it was like game week or something. Well, I said we'll make sure that he's ready to go by game week. He was at not, we'll get him to 90% uh, as far as um, uh, some of the analytics and uh, by then. But uh, in the big picture, um, you know, for that injury, he's, he's right on schedule. He's not ahead of schedule. So he's... 15, 16 week mark. So about Andrew? Yeah, he's been he's been running. And he looks good, and uh, I don't think he's uh, full speed, but he's done one on ones. He's he's done he's done a lot. So he'll, we'll keep progressing. How's Casey well. looked on the ball? Casey Thompson. Yeah, he's done good. Yeah, he had a, a good couple of series. Uh, some third downs yesterday. Uh, some of our first down play, second down. Um, scenarios and get, getting the drive starters off the right way, you know, show some, some of his experience, uh, making decisions quickly. It's done good. Brent, we saw Peyton as a freshman make some impact plays on mm -hmm. special teams as a you know, on the pump block and stuff like that. He said he wants to you know, push for that return job. What, what can he bring to that facet of the game? Yeah, he's just he's a very highly skilled athlete and plays with great confidence. Um, he's got natural instincts and uh, natural ability to catch the ball, uh, you know, under duress, but also the instincts, you know, as a guy with the ball in his hands.
what stood out to you so far about uh, Jackson through the first part of camp maybe that's different from how he was in the spring or before that? Yeah, I think we're executing at a, at a really high level right now. Yeah, decision making uh, is even better than it was. The guys around him are playing better. I think the offensive line is uh, in a much better uh, position than where we were in the spring. Uh, we have some guys again injured but weren't here yet. Uh, I didn't mention Garen Hatchett. He's done uh, fantastic as well as an inside guy. But um, and then overall, just leadership has come. I, th I think he's in a comfortable uh, position. He's let these guys all summer spring, and so it's, uh, it's it's a little more natural. Now, Coach, how are you going to uh, tight end? Looks like it should be a much more productive in terms of receptions and that kind of thing. I don't know about the physical part of it, but with Bauer especially, that should really help an offense from from what it was yeah. one year ago. Yeah, you know, to have the kind of balance that we want, both running and throwing the ball. I think that you, that's got to be a position that. Um, it's not a weakness. Uh, and last year, uh, Stog did a great job, but we just didn't have much behind him. So I think we're in a much better position that way. Uh, you know, between Bauer and uh, Jake, Kate and Helms, uh, Devon Mitchell, um, Josh. That's a that's a you know Kate McIntyre is really you know, he's close to 230 now. He's done a great job as well, more comfortable. So that's a group that can you know execute. And uh, they can block and get a group of guys catching the ball to a big target and tuck the middle of the field. Those are, you know, I think all good offenses have that ability. And uh, so through three days, it's a, it's a group that has had a real transformation from yeah. where we were you know, just over the last couple of years. Brent, how's Dominic Williams looking? How's he fitting in? Yeah, he's done well. And again, uh, again, just day three, and uh, nothing's been perfect, but he's got great. Um, he likes to work, likes to compete, and uh, and that's I would say the those lines of scrimmage. That's you know bragging on the offensive line. They they show they like to work. They like to get after it, and a lot of competition. Iron sharpens iron. Dom's done uh, really nice. He's fit in well. I think the number one reason he's fit in well is because he's had humility and respect for the work and respect for the guys around him, and uh, and then he, he's come in great shape. He worked really hard all summer. Uh, and so he's not on a, on a ventilator, you know, trying to learn uh, to do what we want him to do, uh, both scheme-wise and fundamentally. So from that standpoint, he's really given himself a chance to just make, you know, improvement daily. And uh, you've seen that. Brent, where's, uh, where's Woody Washington working right now, and how much does it help your defense having somebody so versatile? Like yeah, that? no, he's um, his primary position is at corner, and uh, he's done a nice job there. And then he's always had the ability. We've actually, the last two years, have worked him at multiple positions, but we haven't quite had the depth at corner um, that we're hoping that we have there, um, you know, this fall. So, uh, but he's got a, a really good skill set. He's smart. He's played a lot of football. He's really tough, uh, and so he, he plays big. But corner uh, is his primary position. Do you see Peyton on the field a good percentage? Bowen, do you see yeah. him on the field a good percentage of the time? Yeah. If he ain't, who is? Yeah. I, I, no, I mean, between uh, Robert and Billy and right. Peyton and then that group of freshmen. So we don't have a, a lot after that, those three that I just said. And uh, uh, But we have to for us to be able to play at a really high level. And the freshmen have done a nice job. And uh, But if you look at where we were just – Again, over the last two years, we've lost nine scholarship safeties. I mean, that's a lot. And, you know, so we've had to recruit a lot. And, uh, but, uh, and, and got to get them ready to play uh, at a high level. But uh, those guys have done really, those three in particular, the older guys, man, they, man, they have an amazing, again, just as a coach, I don't ever take it for granted just because we're in the same locker room. Um, and I like guys wanting to compete. I don't want guys satisfied being behind another guy. That's the wrong mindset, the wrong attitude, exactly opposite of what we want from our guys. You know, I want ambitious, driven, you know, I want to run out there first. You know, that should mean something to these guys, and it does. But at the same time, man, they've got great respect and love and appreciation for one another. And for, for me, that's where the real growth happens and uh, where they're not looking over their shoulder. They're confident in themselves. And, uh, and that's all led by Billy. Billy's done a great job with those guys. Uh, Peyton had 
an amazing uh, play yesterday um, in, a, in a scheme that um, requires a certain technique. It's not just backpedaling, break on the ball. It's um, it's a real um, deceptive kind of scheme, and, and he there's a lot of fundamentals that are critical that you have it down pat. And a year ago, he was pretty inconsistent with that, and so he's a small thing like that is a, you know just the, the the progress and the maturation that you want from all of your guys, but sometimes it doesn't happen fast enough. And yesterday, he was able to make a, a play on a ball that looked like the guy was wide open, mm -hmm. and just makes an amazing play and shows his. Skin. You know, his skill at catching the football, his, his ability to judge the football. And not only that, but just go attack it too. Climb, you know, the proverbial ladder. Is that the biggest thing, the difference? You're talking about a lot of competition in your first two camps. Mm -hmm. You've got more competition competing your part. Yeah, so I, I think, you know, a year ago, we, t we bragged about competitive depth. Um, I do think there was a slight drop off between that first and second group a year ago, and not near the drop off, if, if any at all. Uh, with the with that first and second group, if you will, and sometimes that second group that means there's like three for two, you know, or uh, you know, with that second group, you know, so there's a there's a handful of guys in that mix. So um, I, I think about linebacker, and again, the transformation that's taken place there in the in the last year and a half from our first year, where we really felt like we only had three guys that could, you know, could go play in a game, and um, to where we're at now. Uh, night and day, and I think you know, for really most, for the most part, every position on our team uh, looks like that. Brent, that cheetah, that cheetah spot. Just how many options do you think you guys can maybe try out there just over the next few weeks? Nine. What do you like about that? What, what do you like about your options there? I like the versatility in the positions, but um, we have a handful of guys that are very instinctive. Um, they, they, they all might look a little bit different, but man, we got size, we got speed, um, we got physicality, guys that have good instincts. Um, I, I really like the depth of the position, and, and many of those guys are playing multiple positions. Uh, that is one of those positions, and so whether you look at a, a guy like a Jaden Lowe or a Kendall Dolby or a Sammy or a Desan uh, or an Eli, you know, uh, Reggie Powers. Uh, and if I wanted to do it tomorrow, we could throw Boganowski over there and, and Reggie at safety, you know, and it would be a probably, again, there'd be a transition, but rather seamless. And, and uh, but, you know, so you're trying to play the guy's strengths and not try to overload guys that can't handle just because their skill set, skill set will allow them. You don't want to overload them mentally as a young player, try to help them get good at something. So, but some guys are a little more, again, like a guy like Eli Bowen, he can, he can do a lot. And the corner mentally is not a, a difficult position. I don't want to take away the mental aspect of playing there because it's more than just, hey, I got my guy, you know? But uh, he's got just the natural fundamentals. His fundamentals already developed. Uh, his confidence, he doesn't get overwhelmed with anything. And uh, uh, he's just a really good football player. And so you try to find those kind of guys at that position. It takes, a, again, a unique skill set, and then we'll try to play to whatever skill set they have there, too. Brent, with Jet getting three practices, Jet. but um, Taylor Tatum, what would have been your early impressions of him this first Yeah, just probably fearless, uh, confident, a physical presence, um, handles uh, tough coaching, you know, trying to get him prepared and ready. Uh, so he's done those things well. He did a good job, obviously, over the course of summer mentally, you know, because it shows in his ability to get out there and execute uh, whatever it is that we're doing. Is he a guy, and is that a position that he can miss a, it, it could not, can uh, still give you what you want coming in, what, in the summer? I mean, again, it's, that's not ideal for most guys, right. but yeah, absolutely. Um, I wouldn't put any limits on what he's going to be able to contribute this fall, based on what we've seen. A very small sample size, the right. uh, first few days, you know, his his, um, his mental capacity, and again, his eagerness to be competitive uh, within the framework of what we're working on offense. But getting Gentry back at corner, how much has that helped your quarterback position? The fact that he's actually been able to go through summer and stuff and everything. Yeah, I think it's good for him. You know, he's missed significant time. Right. I think he had ten technically ten starts last year, but 
probably played maybe four total games. You know, his total snap count is not great. And so, you know, getting him at being able to do something consistently, that's how you develop your skill set and the details of your position. Remember, this is a guy, and I know I've said this before, but a guy that coming out of high school, he just did a lot. And he played middle linebacker, you know, he played safety, he played quarterback, was running back, receiver, he played very little corner. And, um, and so learning how to be a really good functional, fundamentally sound corner or something that, you know, that's what we've tried to do. And he was a guy that didn't come in in the spring or, you know, in the, in January, he was a summer guy, and then we threw him in the fire. So he's got exponential growth potential ahead of him, and uh, this will be a. I think you'll see a tremendous leap from Gentry just in fall camp alone. And he's a super conscientious guy, highly skilled. He really cares about the team, cares about his uh, his opportunity, and uh, is a is a locked in focused guy. So. I'm excited to see his his growth potential. Brent, do you want to talk about your two new coordinators, both uh, Seth and uh, Zach, and how they're and Joe Jones, yeah, they're, they're all doing great, you know. Um, I know, again, they're new, but it's not the normal new. Uh, they're not unfamiliar. These are guys that have been there uh, offensively, systematically, and uh, there's a natural cohesion there. With the, the room, the coach's room, you know, the relationships are real with Coach Bo and Coach uh, Murray and, and Coach Jones. So it's not like you're having to um, gel that, if you will. I uh, don't ever take that for granted, but that's a group of guys that have um, in many ways grown up in the profession together. And then uh, and then Zach, I could, you could say the same thing from just being on the defensive side uh, with myself and the rest of the defensive staff. And uh, you know, you go back to, again, just with some of our support guys like Skowski or you know Xavier Brewer, you know guys that, uh, along with you know Coach Chavis and Coach Bates, uh, uh, Coach Maloney, you know that group of guys. So it's a really um, seamless, you know, for starting with Zach and I and the rest of the guys on, on defense. And then again, you know he hasn't he hasn't had to try to you know figure things out. He speaks the same language from the first day, and just building on you know what we've been able to. Um, foundationally build, you know, over the last two years. Uh, there's, this is not a, a completely new uh, world for Zach, and it's not a completely new world for the staff, and it's not uh, for the players either. So I think that's, that's helped, you know, with the, with the transition. And uh, uh, players will be the first one to probably, you know, testify to that. You One mentioned offensive Eddie line. Is there a point in the camp where you want to get down and you know who your five, six guys some lined up? Is there a point in camp you need or to know? Or ten. That, or yeah. Who you know that you, your guys are. Yeah, I know. Yeah, at some point in time we will. And uh, it's going to happen fast, Myron. You know, the you know, you, by next Saturday, you know, we start school that, that following Monday. And, you know, by Wednesday we're working scout team work. So it's going to happen fast. And uh, that was the challenge. You know, it, Everybody looks at, you know, yesterday was four weeks to, to kick off. And I told them we're, that means we're three weeks from game week. And you're really two and a half weeks from starting. You split the squad up and really start looking at opponents and things of that nature and temple. So it's going to go by. You know, it's going to be just a vapor. And uh, so solidifying that, you've got a really good feel, you know, who, you know, what group of guys that's going to be. And then you pair it down to who runs out there first. That'll be a big thing. But... What I like about the group is there's a lot of, you know, again, versatility, you know, with key guys uh, to be able to play both inside and outside and, and, uh, and maybe even, you know, uh, you know, be able to do that in the game, you know, as well and play at a, at a you know, high level. Brent, what kind of impact have you seen Doug can have so far? Yeah, just he's got a ton of um, experience, ton of energy, his ability to connect to the guys is um, very natural. I think players here and the players real respect <laughs> when we had the home run hitting contest down at the uh, softball uh, stadium. Hey man, the players are hard hard to uh, earn their trust. So it takes something uh, like that. Man, he put a couple on a rope uh, uh, out. And, but uh, he's got he's a great teacher. 
uh, teaches the staff well. He's incredibly passionate about doing what he does. And so his ability to inspire and motivate challenge is, again, uh, you know, very natural you know, for Russ in this space. And, and then he's got a great group of guys you know, to work with, several two- and three-year players uh, that have played a lot. And, um, and so there won't be a uh, – same thing. There's not a, a tremendous – now, we need to have a, a result that's a hell of a lot different than what we've had in the past. But um, Doug's you know, transitioned really, really well, and uh, uh, players really, really have a great deal of respect for him. You mentioned Eddie Pierre Louis. What have you seen from him these first few practices? Uh, just a humble, his work ethic, his uh, his pride in being prepared every day. Uh, you can coach him hard. He's really uh, tough and demanding on himself without you know crushing his own spirit. And, um, but he's, a, he's just ready to learn every day. And uh, he loves his teammates. And uh, again, a highly recruited guy. He's got just tremendous uh, respect for the game and, and the learning process and has a great self-awareness, you know, where his weaknesses are and the things that he needs to do to improve. So that helps the progress happen sooner rather than later. If a guy is immature, uh, he's, he's not real disciplined. and. Um, isn't you know uh, a great teammate? I think those things all stunt the growth. And uh, but he's got again, like I said, great self-awareness. And uh, and then his teammates he's got a lot of really good leaders on the team that, that are helping him, and he, he receives that well. Javante Barnes had a, a tough season last mm -hmm. year. How's he doing physically and, and mentally? Yeah, great. You know, I got up in front of the team you know, several nights ago, and I uh, love some of the things that he said and, and a great testimony. What his expectations were and the disappointment that he experienced last year. Some of it's not his fault. And again, a lot of times you just got to get out of your own head, and, and that's all part of the again, the, uh, you know, making progress. And so that was good. And he's got a. We had a great summer, and he's having a really good first three days. In many ways, looks like his old self, and the one jinxing, but um, he's he's done well in the first three days. This is, your th this is your third ball camp for you from year one to now. Can you kind of put in perspective what you've learned as far as numbers and rosters and even just getting your team ready heading into the season that can take away from the first time you, you were head coach to, to now? Yeah, so it's easy. You know, sometimes you say, well, it's year three, but it's not year three. It's going into year three, but you've really just been here for a couple of years and it feels like dog years sometimes, uh, you know. Improvement and the progress is, uh, has been painful at times and hadn't happened as near as fast as, as you would like it to. But, you know, we, I think we have four or five scholarship players, is it, that we're here, you know, uh, with our first camp. Uh, and everybody else is new. And, and so it's a reminder of that as you look around and, uh, and then you look out there. And I, I love the blend of, uh, you know, again, freshmen. Again, we have over. 50 scholarship freshmen and sophomore on the team uh, with a, a great blend of, of seniors and guys that have uh, paid the price and played a lot of college football. But uh, it's just that every, you know, there's a, there's a more sureness, more depths of leadership. And, uh, you know, and I'm always you know, careful. Sometimes one team isn't very good at leading. We haven't really experienced that. Some teams haven't been as capable to lead because they were brand new and trying to learn themselves. And, uh, but we've got more depth of leadership that has been um, intentionally developed, intentionally recruited, and uh, our guys have worked hard at it, uh, just knowing what to do uh, in our systems, all of our different systems, and more comfortable. And the players can lead, so it's more of a player-led fall camp, uh, more so than it's ever been. And so for me, now you got more levels of trust, and so. Overall, you got more uh, trust, understanding, uh, assuredness, and everything that we're doing, and more confident, you know, a uh, football team as a result. Yeah, time for one last question. Brent Switzer once said that every decision they made as a staff was came down to, does this help us beat Texas? To whatever extent you guys have had that same sort of thought or marker, does it change going into the SEC? Do you put Alabama and Georgia on that pedestal, or? How do, you, how do you approach something like that? Well, how would all of our fans feel like I was comparing ourselves to all those other programs? You know, and I don't, 
I've never tried to compare myself and never tried to compare, um, you know, our locker room or our players or our program. So our standards, and again, I've said this a lot, you know, stand, you know, on its own merit. And, uh, and the standard for excellence, what it takes to be a championship program. And, uh, you know, what's it supposed to look like inside, uh, foundationally, uh, you know, staffing, resources, facilities, roster, all of that. And that's, that's where our focus is and, and meet the standards that we're looking for, what our expectations are to be, again, a championship program. So, um, you know, is Texas a, a, a real rival? Is that something that has a lot of history and tradition? Does it mean a lot to us and a lot of people? You're damn right. It, it means a lot. And, uh, and so we'll never downplay that, but don't want to compare our program. We don't need to. Um, focus inside out, uh, that golden circle, uh, if you will. And, uh, you know, and to me, we should, as a program, just like, you know, the best uh, people and most successful people on the planet are people that are, you know, progressive learners, lifelong learners, and we as a program just continue to get better, adapting, and evolving in a, in a different climate and different uh, circumstances will be really important, you know, for us as a program, you know, moving forward. And, uh, and so from, you know, the people that you're competing with for resources, uh, you know, what the expectations are internally. Um, now, those are uh, those will be real. Uh, and, and so I want to make sure, my job is to make sure I understand the opponent, uh, you know, the things that, uh, that we're competing against. You know, again, resources, facilities, roster, all of those things do matter. And that's my challenge for everybody. For us to control the things that we can control and then us as a program, as a university, that you know we're, we're giving ourselves to compete at the, uh, a chance to compete at the highest level, and uh, so we should, uh, and are, you know, very forward thinking and progressively, you know, understanding, you know, where we stand up, you know, if that's, you know, improving our, you know, our practice facility, you know, compared to, you know, we'd like to have, you know, three or four of these practice fields, so we don't have to go all the way down to the weather field or have an indoor facility right here attached to our practice facility and our football facility and there's an efficiency about that. Maybe you have an air conditioning uh, unit in your ace, in your indoor facility so you don't have to walk through in 120 degrees and, and uh, there's a cumulative effect to that too if you're doing daily walkthroughs and recovery components and things like that. And so my job is to always push and challenge for us to, uh, to, to give the best resources for our players and, and our staff. and then, and then there's a, you know, we do have to produce, you know, that's, that's an expectation uh, uh, in these offices and in that locker room uh, for all of us. So, uh, but for us, it's, you know, at the end of the day, it's, you know, for us to, you know, live up to our standards and, you know, fight and compete for those standards every day and how we do what we do, how we practice, how we work, how we compete, how we recruit, you know, how we build you know, our own facilities, things of that nature. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Brent. Appreciate it.